Hey guys, welcome to another TI-84 uh, video tutorial. Today what we're going to talk about is how to find zeros from a table of values. So I'm going to give an easy quadratic function here just so we can see and then we'll do another one that's a little more challenging. So we're going to have x squared minus 3x and that's going to be and subtract off 10 here and what we're going to do is when we try to remember when we try to find zeros of a quadratic we're actually looking for the x-intercepts or roots so what I'm gonna do here is instead of hitting graph um, and using the the zero button I'm gonna hit second table or second graph to get my table and when I do that what I'm going to do is look for y values are zero because when we have x-intercepts the y value is always zero so if I cursor down and we look at the bigger table of values look at x equals negative 2. We get a y value of 0. So that is one of our zeros. Now this is a quadratic so at most it could have 2. So I'm going to try to cursor down and let's see if there's any more. And what you really want to do is look for the sign change. So look we see our x, our x equals 5 we get y value is 0. So that's our second zero. So our zeros are negative 2 and 5. So to find these zeros, you want to look at when the signs change because that means the graph is either crossing from the above the x-axis or below. So here our y values are all below, 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 all of a sudden, boom, we go to positive. So let's look at a graph that's a little bit harder to see, the zeros, okay, because sometimes they're hard to look for. So let's look at x squared minus 6x plus 2. Okay, and so we're going to go to the table. Now we probably are not going to see anything up close really quick because that's not a factorable equation. Okay, there's no two numbers that multiply to be 2 and add to be negative 6. So I'm looking here and I see negative y value or positive y values positive 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 and then all of a sudden between 0 and 1 on my x's look what happens I go from a positive 2 to a negative 3 so what we can do is change our table so I'm gonna go to my table set and that second window so second window and I can go down we can start at negative 3 I'm gonna start it at negative 1 and or actually even zero because we know that between zero and one our function changes from positive to negative so then I'm gonna go to table start and then I'm actually gonna change this to 0 0.1 and see if I can figure that out so I'm gonna keep it at auto and then I'm gonna go hit second graph and see what I get so I'm gonna to continue to look so between somewhere between one and two so I'm gonna keep looking and see if we can see a sign change and it looks like right between 0.3 and 0.4 there's a sign change so you go 0.3 3 tenths and 29 hundredths okay so one of the solutions would be approximately 0.35 and you could try to do this again and you change your window and we could start it at 0.3 and what happens instead of 0.01 I went 0.05 and see if I could find that zero. Back to my table. And now it's so close, there's the, the zero here, 0.35. And so that's about the approximation, 0.35. The actual zero from the graph is 0.354. But if I was approximating the zero, I would say it's 0.35. Okay, so that's how we can use the table of values to get the zeros. Remember, look for where the y changes either from positive to negative or negative to positive. I uh, hope this helps. If you have any questions, um, just email me and, uh, at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov or you can just talk to me in class. See you next time, guys.